Okay guys, so last week I finally put together my charger. It's in a very rough state and it looks horrible. It has many more improvements to go, but I'm, nonetheless it works and it works really well. Now this charger is built around a VPF-S200-48 power supply. This power supply takes in 120 volts AC and puts out between 36 and 56 volts DC. There's a little dial in there, you can adjust it to a pretty exact voltage. Now, with this charger, it it doesn't have amperage limiting. So if I were to try to charge the batteries directly with it, it would pull like 20 amps and it would trip the internal safety mechanisms in the charger, or in the power supply, which I'm really glad that it has because it has like over voltage, over current, and over temperature. So that's pretty cool. Unfortunately though, that means that I have to baby it because I have to put it up by a half a volt and let it, let, it, let it charge up and then put it up by half a volt more. So what I did was I added this one ohm, 100 watt, ceramic resistor from the 1960s and that's in line with it so now that increases the resistance of the circuit so whenever I try to charge the 48 volt battery which is probably like 46 volts when I charge it and I try to charge it with an input of 50 or 51 volts it pulls less amperage and so it's more manageable up here we have four switches we have the main power slip switch a 5 amp circuit breaker and a three position switch which is the only switch that's hooked up right now but that's okay. Right now it's in the opposite off position, and we have a amp meter up here. If we push it up, we get the high amp charge, which is pulling three amps when I do that. When I do it down, it only pulls two amps, because now it's going through the resistor. I think I have a resistive connection inside of there, because normally this would be pulling like four or five amps on the high setting. But oh well, maybe it's just, I don't know. Oh well. But I just set it like that, and it charges. Now the really nice thing is I can tell how charged it is by looking at how much current it's pulling because the closer this battery's voltage gets towards the output voltage of this power supply, the less current it pulls. So if I, if I discharge this battery a lot down to 43 volts or so and I charge it, it's going to pull like 4 or 5 amps on the low setting. But whenever it gets closer and closer, it slowly takes less and less current and it's kind of like a countdown. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I'm really happy about that. I also picked up a bike speedometer, and I've so far I've gone about 150 miles on this trike. So that's pretty handy. It's, it's nice to be able to see your speed and how far you've gone. It was about three dollars. No, that's about five dollars from eBay. So here's a quick look at the power supply in a better light. We have the main power unit, which cost me thirty-five dollars. The outside aluminium case, which cost me about ten dollars. It's made of cast aluminium. Each switch was about three dollars, which I think I think the circuit breaker was four dollars. The main amp meter was I think it was about twelve dollars. And that I think is kind of worth it. The resistor was about I think four or five dollars. And of course I bought the power cable, which is a 20 foot extension cord for about eight or nine dollars. Unfortunately I've had a few things that aren't so good. Okay, so I was wanting to upgrade my new laptop with an SSD because the internal hard drive is slowing down me editing videos because it can't access the files fast enough to watch the video in real time while I'm editing it because it, it just stutters and then I have to trust by the audio that I'm editing it correctly. Well, if I installed an SSD, it would be able to access the files more quickly and it would be able to play back the video in the preview mode. Unfortunately, they didn't really install an, uh, they didn't really give like an installation disk, they only give a recovery disk. So I tried using the recovery disk on here and it didn't really work. Not counting, the recovery disk is for Windows 8 and I don't, I don't, I do not want to use Windows 8. I'm a Windows XP, Windows 7 person. Now, they do have an option in here, like if you go to my computer and you look up my, the computer, you can see that there is a Lenovo recovery drive. And if I click on that, it will allow me to burn a new disk to recover the Windows 7 that's on here onto the hard drive. Unfortunately, that, sh that software is shit, and it does not allow you to really use it because it just runs into errors whenever you try to load it, because it, it, it forgets to write some files or whatever. I don't know. The other reason I was wanting to start using this SSD instead of the main hard drive is because Lenovo laptops in the past like year or so have had a virus on them that compromises the entire system. It's called Superfish. 
Thankfully though, it turns out my laptop didn't have that, so I didn't try to get a new installation. I was just thinking about moving over the same installation, or at least making a recovery of it onto a new SSD. Fortunately though, their, soft their shitty software decided it didn't work want to work with my new USB DVD writer, and so instead it started formatting my 3 terabyte backup drive. This has all of my information, like all my videos, all the raw videos, all of my 3D models, everything on it. Of course, I do have a backup of this drive back in Illinois. Actually, more like this is a backup of my previous drives that are still in Illinois, so I do have two backups. But still, it pisses me off that I lost 2.7 terabytes of data. Thing is, though, I didn't actually lose it. I just lost the partition table because as soon as I realized I started formatting it, I plugged it out, or I pulled out the cable. Now what I'm doing is I'm going through different programs trying to figure out ways to recover it. I've tried EAU, um, E A S, it's an E A U S, uh, like ease use, whatever. It's, it's some stupid program, and they make you wait through a long thing. No, no, no. It was M3 that uh, I haven't tried the ease use or whatever, ease us or whatever compiler thing. But the thing is that that costs like a hundred dollars. I tried M3 data recovery. It made me wait through a 12-hour scan, and then it said, you got to pay. It's like, fuck you. No. So now what I'm using is I'm using a program called Test Disk. It's free, and it seems to be working okay. I have it t going through it, and it should take about four days to scan through the entire drive. Currently, it's at 38%. Very hopeful that it'll work. In the end, though, I'm not really that worried about it. It's just now that it's like, ah, I want to figure out how to do this, because it's a good thing to know how to recover the lost partition table. Now, on some good news, I had an LED unit come in, 100 watt LED, and this will be going towards the next e electric trike project. Because right now I'd say that with this charger and that speedometer, it's at about version 1.3 or so. And 1.4, I'm hoping it'll have like a spot, a, a front headlight, depends on if I get my little voltage converters in or not. But another option is I'm also wanting to think about making a hard wood trunk on the back. So I, I get rid of the basket and I just have a hard lockable trunk. That'd be pretty nice too. Well, whenever I got the parts for this, I got some more parts too. Got this stuff. Okay, so what we have here is we have an interesting little old circuit board that I picked up. Look at that. Like from the 1960s, it was 50 cents. I couldn't pass it up. I love blue circuit boards. And I picked up this fan for the heat sink, for this, for the light, this 8 kilobit RAM card, well, the booked it for it, for a TRS-80, a Tandy TRS-80, circuit board with it, and maybe that card, don't know. And finally, for $5, I picked this up. This is a silicon wafer. There's a bunch of microchips. Probably just simple CMOS chips in there, but still, it's pretty cool. Just look at that. I'm still looking for a, a full one, but this one's good enough. Just $5 for this, I couldn't pass it up. So yeah, that's pretty much what's been going on. I hope my drive gets all figured out by the test disk program. I hope I can work on upgrading my tricycle to version 1.4 or whatever with this. And yeah, things are looking pretty awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya!